All right, YouTube, not that long ago I made a video on how Venezuela was fucked. Um, essentially, they've got a monocultural economy. It's based on oil. That's really all they have. Uh, a lot of the stuff that they have in Venezuela is produced uh, centrally. It's produced by Venezuela for the consumption of Venezuelans. Uh, they export oil. You know, they do have an export market. I don't know what the fuck else they export, but I'm sure, I don't know, palm fronds or something like that. Uh, but now they're basically screwed. Maduro has shortened the work week to two days. And this is only a little while after shortening it to a three-day work week. Now, anywhere else in the world, if you said, oh, well, we're moving to a two-day work week, people would be like, huzzah, it is great. Uh, you know, we have to labor less and we're still, we still have the rudiments of life at the very least. Or even, uh, you know, we're a developed country and we're so rich we only have to to work uh, 16 hours a week well you know that's that's great the reason though why they're shortening it to a two-day work week they don't have the electricity necessary to continue production the other five days of the week uh, their only beer producer has also shut down now in a in a centrally controlled economy you have problems anyway the big problem here the people of Venezuela are already under quite a bit of stress and now they don't have alcohol that's going to be a bigger problem than I think a lot of people realize. You see, when, when an economic downturn happens, people tend to, to drink, to alleviate their stress, to forget some of their problems at the end of the week, which for Venezuelans is they've got a five-day weekend, so they're going to be doing a lot of drinking. Or they would, now they'll have to make like bathtub vodka or something. Unfortunately, the central planning system of Venezuela... Uh, has lost a lot of its economy not only due to oil uh, the price collapse of oil it rose a little bit and it's sort of stable right now it'll fall back down trust me um, that's assured it's not going to be rising up back to a hundred a barrel anytime soon and that's about what Venezuela needs to be solvent that's that's what they need to break even they need like 110 120 a barrel to actually make a uh, profit unfortunately it's what 40 a barrel or something right now some insanely small number compared to a few years ago so they're kind of screwed uh, their hydroelectric system is all fucked up though too their hydroelectric dams bring a lot of power to the country and right now there's a drought uh oh you see the hydroelectric dams can't produce enough power um, thus they have uh, put forth a referendum to get rid of maduro to get rid of their great socialist dictator leader, um, Nicolas Maduro, of course, Hugo Chavez's favorite son. And their uh, petition needed 200,000 signatures. They got 600,000 in a single day. Uh, thus, people are speculating it won't be long before Maduro is removed. And the so-called center-right, which really, uh, the center-right of Venezuela is sort of like our far-left Democrats. That is, they, they believe in at least a few rudiments of capitalism to actually have an economy that aren't directly under the control and regulation of the government. Their so-called like left in Venezuela is like communism and then like Maduro and his further left people are like you know Marx would blush as far as the things that they propose they have a centrally planned oil system and therein lies the problem Maduro tells his people that they're going to be robbed blind by foreign investors if they allow foreign companies to come in and compete at all uh, to come in and operate at all so of course they've they've got one state oil company extracting this stuff the problem is when you have an economic downturn I said I believe two years ago now they need to urgently invest as much as possible in upgrading their infrastructure to extract oil more efficiently uh, they didn't do that and of course now you have the downturn of oil well there it goes uh, they no longer have the opportunity to invest their only choice now is wait it out and starve in the meantime their shelves are empty the bread lines don't even exist anymore because there's no bread to eat they don't even have any fucking beer at this point they either wait in the dark with electricity two days a week with a two-day work week where what little food and and goods are left are redistributed or they kick maduro out they get some sense into Venezuela. They allow foreign competition. This will increase oil output. It will decrease the cost of extracting it. And yes, some of that income will be siphoned off by whoever happens to be investing. It's likely, by the way, to be the United States, first and foremost, doing that. But at the same time, the people of, of Venezuela will get an enormous amount of wealth back that they don't have now because they're not the sole country involved with absorbing any hit on oil prices. 
Only now they're going to have to wait anyway. What oil company is going to uh, invest a bunch of money in Venezuela with oil being as cheap as it is right now? Even the most efficient rigs are barely turning any profit at all. So they're going to have to wait until the prices rise. It could be years before that happens. OPEC right now is in shambles. They don't even uh, know how to deal with this sort of a situation. Now, some people have said, well, they declined. They decided to keep output high in order to throttle the growth of the U.S. oil industry. Well, that's just fine. It throttles the growth of every oil nation in the world. Russia's suffering, too, because of this. Now, it's not a case where some conglomerate of nations just tried to screw the United States and the Western world. It's actually helping U.S. production. Everything other than oil, everything else here is cheaper. People are paying less at the pump. They're traveling more. They're consuming more goods. Those goods are being made more cost-effectively if oil's involved anywhere in the process. Transportation is cheaper. It's great for the United States' diverse economy. It's terrible for a state like Russia, and it's absolutely horrendous for a state like Venezuela, South Saudi Arabia or something like that, they're suffering the most of all. But uh, Maduro is probably on his way out. Again, they got three times as many signatures as they actually needed, and they did it in a single day. I think they had three days to do that, and they did it much quicker and many more signatures than expected. So he's probably gone. They'll have a center-right coalition, which really means you know, basically our far-left Democrats. Well, they have more common sense than people like Hugo Chavez or Nicolas Maduro, so I guess that's an improvement. You have to start somewhere. That will improve things there. Uh, but, I mean, without the beer, people are going to be a little bit more, uh, they're, they're going to be a little bit more aggressive, I think. There have already been riots and lootings and things, but there's not much to loot anymore. Uh, unless you're going into a government office, you know, every government in the world lives lavishly off the backs of the people. It doesn't matter whether it's the most capitalistic nation you can think of, or the most socialistic nation, or some communist utopia like fucking Cuba. They've got the fine cigars, and the thousand dollar bottles of wine, and the tuxedos, and all of the other stuff that the rich really enjoy. You don't really have many rich people in Venezuela either, for the most part because so much of their wealth is centrally planned. Uh, but as far as the, the upper-level bureaucrats and the, the military generals and so forth, yeah, they live a lavish life of luxury. So unless you want to break into the house of some four-star Venezuelan general and risk getting shot down trying to do so, you're not going to find much to loot. Maybe a couple dead rats that people have been chewing on for the last week, and that's as good as you can do. You know, the last can of beans in the grocery store or something like that. Production is now below the I mean here's the other thing here's another piece of news I thought this was amazingly not funny but sad more than funny uh, they can't even print money it costs more money to operate the printing presses than they actually get out of printing it in the first place they're they're attempting to desperately re-import their own money from other countries by the plane load in order to shore up their economy so that they even have money in circulation it's gotten to the point where it takes over a thousand Venezuelan dollars to equal one US dollar on the black market that's there. People prefer to trade in currencies that are somewhat stable. Nobody wants to use their own Venezuelan dollars because they're so subject to constant inflation. Their inflation rate, I think it was 750% inflation. It's insane. So their money isn't even worth the paper that it's printed on. The paper literally costs more than the money, even for higher denominations like the hundred whatever notes. Uh, to print. Uh, it's insane. This is not the way in which an economy that's healthy is functioning. The, th the thing is, they've got more oil than anybody else on earth. They have the, the largest proven oil reserves. They make Saudi Arabia look like a lightweight. And yet you look at Saudi Arabia, who, I mean, they are suffering, but they diversify it a little bit. They have more competition. They have higher efficiency. And so while they're suffering, even though they're perhaps suffering more than Venezuela, on the top line, on the bottom line, people are still able to get by. In Venezuela, they don't even have enough to eat. They don't even have a fucking rotten potato to chew on. People wait in line for hours to go and get food. This is Bernie Sanders' vision of America on steroids. You wait in line for a couple hours, and you might get something other than a bulging can of botulism riddled food canned 10 years ago. That doesn't sound like the sort of model we need to use here. It's not the model the Venezuelans obviously want to keep using, because right now it looks like increasingly almost everyone wants Maduro out. That is, and the funny thing is, the government that they label as being like far right there, by our standards, you know, would be like Elizabeth Warren level. 
or or at, at furthest right it'd be neocon level you know sort of uh, just general status that don't really care they just want to graft your tax money some way otherwise they don't really give a damn that's about as far right as anything goes in a state like venezuela you'd have to dig deep into the underground to find some cell of what would actually pass as right wingers anywhere in venezuela probably anywhere in latin america for the most part I mean, it's amazing uh, to see the depths of misery and suffering that are going on there. When you work two days a week, you got five fucking days off, you don't have electricity, and you're in a tropical climate, I'd think that'd be a problem too. You don't have needed drugs for like women who are pregnant, you don't have any equipment for that, you don't even have electricity when the births are being delivered. You don't have necessary medica uh, medication for chronic conditions, even like topical shit. You don't even have fucking band-aids or something. You don't have gauze. You don't have saline. You don't have you don't have anything. No, you can't even refrigerate your blood supply probably at this point. Uh, so you spend five days a week without power doing nothing except waiting in line again to receive what little food you can possibly accumulate so that you don't starve outright. It will get to the point in a state like this, if things continue to worsen, people will resort to cannibalism. That's not an exaggeration. The food production runs out because there's not enough energy to produce it. They will eat each other, or they'll wander off into the jungle and they'll get some bush meat. They will get to that point. Now, this is something that's almost unheard of uh, anywhere in what we consider the developed world. The problem with Venezuela is they frittered away all of the money they could have used to expand, to develop, to make things more efficient, to make things more sure in the future, to lay up an investment for future generations. They took that excess money instead and doled it back out to the people in redistributionist style because of socialism there. And that's great for the short term. It keeps people pacified. They get a little bit of extra stuff. They have the washing machine now and the extra can of guava extract or something. That's great. The problem is then when a problem hits, you're fucked. You're screwed. Uh, we see that in Venezuela. They can't print their money. They can't obtain beer. They're not going to have electricity. They got a two-day work week. That'll Maybe it'll be cut to a one-day work week. Maybe their government will just dissolve and they'll say, oh, the people are on their own. We're flying out to uh, some other communist-friendly nation. So Venezuela is basically collapsing now. I didn't think it'd go that quickly. I thought it would be a long, slow slide uh, like often happens. You know, look at the USSR or something. Things get worse and worse. It takes, you know, years or decades. Under Maduro, it's in less than a year, it's managed to go from, eh, well, things are pretty fucking bad here to, oh, you know, our state is basically non-functioning at this point. It has no economy. We don't even have electric. We can't even turn on a lamp at night. Uh, you know, what about the air conditioning units? I would think that would be kind of important in a place where it regularly hovers around 95 degrees with 100% humidity. Especially if you've got people who are sick in a hospital or something. Are they providing them with power seven days a week? At least in, you know, uh, the burn ward, the maternity ward, you know, some of the more important parts of the hospital that get used you know, by people who uh, are in need of cooling off? Or do they just give them like a fucking popsicle? Do they even have popsicles at this point? give them a basin of uh, lukewarm swamp water to cool off in. So uh, here we see the roots of socialism. We see rather the seeds of socialism sown in Venezuela. It's not pretty. Uh, and people need to take note of this situation that's there. And contrast that with so-called Nordic socialism, which people here pretend to support, and really uh, they don't even have a clue what they're talking about. They're talking about an entirely different economic and social model. Also, Maduro is a tyrant. He's just a fuckwad. Uh, he also has a stupid-looking face and a stupid-looking mustache. That's about all. Peace out.